Hi everyone, welcome to a new craft tutorial video. This video is all about the June 2021 Craft Kitsune box. I'll be going over all the supplies included in the kit as well as how I made this particular shadow box. I'll also have a few other ideas for shadow boxes at the end of the video. If you've worked with resin before, you know that some projects can take multiple days to complete, so I apologize in advance for the differences in lighting. And with that, let's jump into the included supplies for the month. Alright, so here is the custom Craft Kitsune box. And if you want to learn more about Craft Kitsune, please go to the website if you're unfamiliar with this subscription box. The voice you hear now is me, Liz. I am the owner of Craft Kitsune and I do pretty much everything for this monthly craft box. Each month I curate a group of supplies around a specific theme and project. So that was the supply list for this month and then here are some instructions. Now let's quickly go over each of the supplies. Here is the set of exclusive molds designed and produced just for Craft Kitsune. So this is the shadow box set. So we have a larger base mold, which is for making the shadow box base. And then we have the matching lid that fits on top of the shadow box. Next we have our two part resin. And this is a 3 to 1 ratio, which is better for deeper projects. It's a bit more of a watery consistency than a 1 to 1 ratio. Then we have this set of foils. There are four different colors and three of each. We have metal decorative corners. And there are a lot of different styles and finishes. Some are this style, which have kind of three sides to them, and then the other two styles are more flat, but each one has four in each of the different finishes for a total of eight sets. Then we have a reusable silicon mixing tool. This is going to come in handy for mixing up our two-part resin. And then lastly, we have these fairy lights. So this is a strand of 10 LEDs. So you just remove the little plastic piece and then you can switch it on or off and it is battery operated. All right, so now that we've gone over all of the supplies, let's jump into the tutorial portion of the video. So before I pour the resin into either of the molds, I'm going to do a little bit of prep work. So here I am unwinding the LED strand. And I'm also going to be placing a silicon mat onto my work surface because I will be pouring resin soon. So I'm gathering all of the supplies I'll be needing and then I'm going to be putting some embellishments into the molds prior to mixing up the resin. It's important to do these kinds of things first so that you know how you want everything to be laid out and also preparing for when you pour the resin as resin does have an open time or a time in which you are able to work with it before it starts to harden. This particular resin's open time is around half an hour. I find that I can push that a little bit, no longer than an hour. So I've placed the metal corners that I want to use on the lid. So now I'm actually taking the mold from the next kit, which is the July kit, and I'm going to be using the window design to make two windows for the lid. So I'm going to be using some of the gold foils that came in this kit and putting them inside of the cavity of the mold. Next, I'm going to be using some black UV resin I have on hand. You can also take regular clear UV resin and mix in a little bit of black alcohol ink or other pigment. So I just fill the cavity completely, making sure it goes all the way around the window frame. And then I take my UV lamp to cure this for about a minute. So I make two of these and I'll embed them inside the lid mold for the shadow box and I'll show you that in just a minute. So now what I'm doing is taking those LEDs and I'm going to be placing them in the sides of the shadow box mold. And what you have to remember is that the bottom of this mold will actually be the front of the shadow box once you unmold it. 
So yeah, here is a fast forward of that process and then I'll just note that I like to leave the lights on for when I do this just so I can easily see their position inside the mold. And then once I place the last light, I just like to make sure that this little end part of the light strand, so it's like more of a metal piece, I like to kind of curve it outside of the mold just so I know that it's not going to get embedded inside of the mold. And then that the on and off switch is where I want it to be in relation to the finished piece. All right, so now I am taking some gold foil again and dumping it onto the mold. And then I am going to be kind of rubbing it onto the mold, just making sure it's secure and also spreading it out so that some of the flakiness spreads throughout the mold. So here's another fast forward of me doing that. And then I also try to get some of the foil down into the sides of the mold so that it is more spread out throughout the box. And I also turn on the lights again just to see and make sure that the large foil pieces don't cover up or interfere with the lights. All right, so that's it in terms of preparing the base of the shadow box. So now I'm going to go back to the lid. So I'm taking those two window frames and placing them where I want them on top of the mold. And now I'm actually going in with some UV resin and I'm putting a drop into each of the window panes. This will stick the windows to the exact spot I want them on the mold itself so it won't slide around when I pour the rest of the resin in. And it also makes the window panes completely transparent and clear. And then I cure that under my UV lamp for a minute or so and now I'm ready to pour my two-part resin. To start out with, I'm going to be using a silicon mixing cup and then I'm taking both parts of my resin as well as the silicon mixing tool. And I'm going to be mixing the entire bottles of the resin. So you just want to make sure in this case that your silicon mixing cup is at least 120 milliliters large. And then for a three-part resin, you want to measure out part A, which I already did. And then you want to measure out part B, and part B is one-third of part A. And then for any two-part resin, you're going to want to mix it for at least two minutes, two to three minutes. And then you want to make sure to scrape the sides of the cup as well as make sure you're hitting the bottom of the cup as you mix. So here's a little fast warp speed of me doing the rest of that. And now your resin is ready to pour. However, if you want to tint it or add any embellishments such as glitter, do that now. So here I am just adding a drop or two of some black alcohol ink and this is a transparent dye. So I'm mixing that in. It's going to give it a black tint. And when I'm using opaque pigments, I actually like to put a drop on the silicon mat and then slowly add it into the resin. That's because opaque pigment goes a long way in resin and if you add too much pigment to your resin it can actually inhibit the curing process so your pieces can turn out all bendy or not cure properly. And so now I'm going to pour into each of the molds and so I do this slowly and I like to pour a little bit of resin into the larger mold. Um, almost filling it and then I actually like to wait and make sure that it seeps all the way to the bottom because if it starts to seep to the bottom I'll need to top it off with some more resin and then for the lid mold I'm actually going to be pouring around those window panes so making sure not to pour on top of the window panes because I want to keep the insides of them completely clear and I also make sure that the resin doesn't go over the window panes and then for this lid mold as well as the main base mold, I make sure that the resin goes all the way inside the edges of the molds. So for this lid mold, I'm going to move the corners so that I make sure that the, they're not blocking the edges. And then I go in with this silicon tool and I just run it along the edges just to make sure that the resin has seeped all the way down. And then once I do that, I'm moving the corners back to the corners of the mold. 
I like to give a three to one ratio resin two to three days to fully cure. I was a little bit impatient and I only waited 24 hours <laughs> before unmolding and then I realized I probably should have given it at least two days, but that's okay because as soon as I unmolded it, I left it to the side and it finished curing on its own. So three to one ratio resin can take a little bit longer to cure than a one to one ratio resin. But anyway, here I am unmolding the pieces and I do so by peeling the edges from the resin piece itself and taking it out. And then for the larger base piece, I actually roll the mold onto itself, roll it down. This silicone mold is pretty sturdy and will maintain its shape, but still be as gentle as possible during this step just to prevent any tearing. And then once I have it fully rolled down, I take out the middle piece like so. And then like I just mentioned, it is a little bit wonky. <laughs> Here's my boyfriend being like, why is it all weird shaped? And so now I'm just kind of like forming it back to the way it was supposed to be. And then I'm ensuring that the lights work. And then I'm going to be setting it aside for another couple days so that I can finish hardening. So now I'm going in with some super glue and I'm going to be adding some of those metal corners, the design like so. And next time I actually want to try embedding them in the resin. So placing them in the mold first and then pouring the resin on them. That's because gluing them on like this will raise the box a little bit. So it'll still stand up, however it'll be a little bit raised because of these box corners if that makes sense. So it's not too big of a deal, especially if you just want to put this one box mold somewhere. However, if you want to try stacking the boxes after you've made several, it might make it easier to do so if you embed the corners directly in the resin. And that's it as far as making the shadow box goes. Now I'm going to be filling it. So let's take a look at the finished project. For this box, I'm going to be filling it with miniature furniture to create a study or library scene. And I made these furniture pieces using the July box, so the next box. And you can see how I made these in the next video, which is the July 2021 tutorial. Now I'm just adding some finishing touches such as the book and mini computer. And if you wanted to, you could add some adhesive, some temporary adhesive to set your pieces inside of the box so that they don't move around. And then you can also add the lid on top of it. Some other ideas for your shadow boxes are to use them to store craft supplies or other trinkets. You can also add a sculpture inside of it or your artwork. Use them to display some of your other projects. Here I added some hooks and I'm adding some charms I made using the May box. So here's what that looks like once I finished adding all of them. And then you can place the lid over it. So yeah, lots of possibilities and I can't wait to see what you subscribers come up with. And then lastly, here is what the box that I made in this tutorial video looks like when you turn on the LEDs. I really love the look of the embedded LEDs. I'm sure it would look really great with some artwork or a sculpture inside of it as well. So again, if you're interested in Craft Kitsune and becoming a subscriber, you can learn more by going to the website. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can watch more Craft Kitsune tutorials by clicking on one of these videos. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!